Hello and welcome to Good or Bad. I have just one thing to say, and then presumably a lot more to say. Zombie demons, aka Zemans. Oh my god, this is so gross! Dead Before Dawn, released in 2012, was a horror comedy focusing on a group of college students, but specifically this guy, Casper Galloway, who is played by Devon Bostick. And I think he did a great job at playing this quirky, socially awkward guy. Naturally, with over the top acting. <sighs> How am I supposed to know what color lipstick is better? I don't. Just go with red. Fine, go with electric fuchsia! I don't care about your lipstick problems! But when it comes to overacting and memorable performances, you just cannot beat this guy. Christopher Lloyd, known for many roles over the years and his overacting, is just brilliant in this movie for the short time that he's actually in it. But anyway, on to the plot. The Christopher Lloyd character, Horace Galloway, owns an occult store and needs his grandson Casper to look after the store while he attends an award ceremony. For a cult store ownership? Casper doesn't want to look after the store because many years ago when he was a kid he was in the store's basement messing around with an evil looking skull urn, then watched his dad die in front of his eyes, which to be fair is a reasonable reason not to want to go back there, but he does anyway and his grandfather lays down the law. Don't close up before closing time and lock the door after you do, but most importantly, do not let people within spitting distance of that their own which contains an extremely powerful evil spirit, which for some reason I keep on a shelf well within the public reach. Do you understand me? Yeah, I certainly do. So Casper is looking after the store when his friends show up, and naturally among them is the girl he likes. They want to get a closer look at the skull urn, but because he doesn't want to look like a superstitious coward in front of her, he brings it down and of course drops it. His friends start mocking his superstitiousness and come up with a joke curse, which is that starting at 10pm, whoever they look at kill themselves and turn into a zombie demon, aka Zeman. Yes, Zeman sounds like semen. Ha <laughs> Moving on. Out, out now. Calm down, Caspi, it's okay. No. Don't cry. I'm not crying, I'm sweating in my eyes. And if they don't lift the curse by dawn, they are cursed. Forever. Ah! Oh, and the Zemans. I'm gonna be saying that quite a lot today, aren't I? Well, whatever. The Zemans don't eat your brains out like a normal zombie would. Instead, they give their victim a hickey, and that makes them want to kill themselves, and then they come back to life as a Zeman. Yeah. Oh, and that's not even the weirdest part. Yeah, there's a weirder part. You can seduce the Zeman to make it your slave. Yeah. One thing I am curious about is whether this really is an evil spirit or is it some kind of wish granting thing. Because they shattered the urn, they're made of a curse which comes true. But what if you make up something that isn't a horrible curse? Okay, after I drop this, I'm going to wish for something good. In five seconds time, this movie won't exist. Just the horrible curses then, is it? His friends just go and do whatever while Casper prepares for the end of days in what I must say is a very comical scene. Where does a man find a hammer in this house, mother? Under the sink, honey. Oh. <laughs> I'm so happy your grandfather called- I love the way he walks off with a hammer like that. When 10pm finally rolls around, he has boarded up all of his windows, and because nothing really happens, he assumes he was just being silly and thinks everything is okay. Taking bets, taking bets, will everything be okay? Of course it won't. As people start to make eye contact with our merry band of cursed characters, they start to kill themselves in some very funny ways. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> that one's gotta be my favourite. Casper's mother kills herself and comes back as a Zeman and chases him out of the house until she gets hit by a truck. Out steps two guys who, because Casper looks at them, kills themselves. Casper runs away and bumps into his friend Becky, played by April Mullen, who also happens to be the director of this movie, who after seeing her day jump off a balcony and come back from the dead, has since armed herself with a crossbow. After the usual panicking realisation that the curse is real, they run over to the football match only to find a lot of bodies and their fellow cursed friends. And wow, is that a lot of bodies? 
which then come back to life as demons, so they all run off to find the last of their cursed friends, Seth, who recounts the many, many people he made eye contact with while posting his package. And I'm not gonna lie, it is quite funny. But anyway, a stoner Zeman turns up, and it's not every day you get to say that, is it? Becky kills it with the crossbow, but as more and more Zemans appear, they all jump into an RV and head to the occult store to see if they can find out how to lift the curse. Only to then find Casper's grandfather is back from his award ceremony, and he's mighty pissed off with Casper for disturbing the skull urn. Christopher Lloyd is just awesomely funny, especially when pissed off. No kidding! Anyway, he explains that this book can help them lift the curse because the spirit is burning the new curse rules into the book. Well, at least this spirit believes in fair play. But of course, the kids make eye contact with Horace, so naturally he takes his own trophy and plunges it into his brain. And as he is dying, he tries to tell them that the key to lifting the curse is in Casper's great-grandfather's coffin. But naturally, they don't understand him. Yet. They read the book and discover that Casper's great-grandfather trapped the evil spirit in the skull urn many, many years ago, and to retrap it they need to gather the following items. Ashes from the previous skull urn, a new urn to trap the spirit in, and a new human skull to seal the urn. With a toad's heart to bring it to life. Well, of course, you need the toad's heart. And finally they need a timepiece from the previous exorcist of the spirit. This one's just weird. Okay, so they have the ashes and a new urn, so they set out to the college to acquire a human skull, a toad's heart from the science lab, and to use the library to find out more about Casper's great-grandfather. But before they get to the college, douchey mcdouche douche over there decides that cursed lifting is lame, and he's going to go and make it on his own, and then gets killed. Well, that was pointless. Oh, and they find the hillbilly Zemans from earlier, which proves Zemans can in fact drive. Maybe now people will stop throwing their lives away in the pursuit of the answer to that age-old question. And then they throw a grenade at them, which they picked up at the occult store, because as we all know, all good occult stores come equipped with grenades. Then they run low on fuel, and I have to admit, seeing them two try and pay for the fuel without the clerk seeing their eyes is a pretty funny scene. But because of the others dicking around out there, they cause a disturbance, the clerk goes out to investigate and sees their eyes, so as they drive away, he pours fuel all over himself. And it was going so well. They arrive at the college. Seth and Lucy go to get the toads out. Daz goes to try and find the skull. Well, Becky and Charlotte go to the library to find out more about Casper's great-grandfather. And what is Casper doing on this chapter of the adventure to lift the Zeman curse? Well, he's guarding the RV, of course. That's a hero you can root for. While he is heroically looking after the RV, his professor turns up and starts badgering him about his assignment and the fact he's in a no parking zone. Until he accidentally looks at him and turns him into a Zeman, which he heroically runs over. Seth and Lucy run into a Zeman, who Lucy then. Oh, the seduction clause. <coughs> That's just gross. Out of the yeah. way! Hey, Joshy, time to hit the showers, big boy. <laughs> Thank you, Seth. They grab the heart and all having accomplished their task, regroup back at the RV. Now they know where his great-grandfather is buried and work out what Horace was trying to say earlier. Dig. So they have a heading. To the cemetery. But just as they work that out, they find out that their friend Daz, um, that guy, got a hickey from a Zeman. I just feel silly saying that. And now he wants to kill himself so he can turn into a Zeman. But they stop him from killing himself just in time. And then they arrive at the cemetery and start digging. I need you to forgive me. For what? For this. <laughs> they probably should have tied him up or something. They finish digging and find the timepiece and a Zeman turns up. Lucy tries to seduce this one like she did the last one, but it doesn't work. You stop that right now. You should be ashamed of yourself just waltzing in here, giving Lucy of all girls a hickey, and then just screaming and acting like a, like a simpleton. So Becky tells it off, and Lucy just snaps her neck, comes back to life as a Zeman, which Seth then seduces. Guys, guys, check it out. I'd like to introduce you to my new main squeezeroo, Zeman slave Lucy. I've seen many films. Some funny, some sad, some good, and others bad, but this is downright mad. Okay, now Daz, who is allergic to bees, jumps out of a tree and holds a bees hive above his head. Why? Why the bees? Do 
do I even need to? Right, so Daz is dead. They slightly bury him, and then go and assemble the urn. But oh no! The urn is broken, what will they do? We'll use a hot dog mug, of course. Now with the new hot dog skull urn complete, the next step in the xenology for Dummies book appears, saying that one of the cursed must sacrifice their life. Casper takes this task on himself, and is about to do himself in with a crossbow, when suddenly... Zeman attack! And he accidentally shoots Becky. Okay, okay, let's just get through this quick. After a heart to heart with the dying Becky, Casper goes to kill himself again, but ends up wrestling with Zeman Daz. Then blows himself up with a grenade, thus lifting the curse. I'm here. Casper? What? The events were undone? That is just a sucky letdown of an ending. But on the brighter side, at least we get to see Christopher Lloyd again. They then graduate and then take on a job at the occult barn. And Lloyd goes on holiday. The end. Well, that was Dead Before Dawn. It started off good enough, but in the last half it just got too silly. It just all went downhill, I think. The cast did a very good job at providing hammy performances, especially Christopher Lloyd. And I will say that for hardcore horror comedy slash zombie fans, it's worth the watch for the first half alone, but as a rental. See you next time.